El Swayal, everybody. Good day. Today we are looking at resumes for your career education class. This video will be a bit longer than my videos normally are, but uh, we'll work through some really important information so that you can leave high school with a really solid resume in place. Let's take a look at some resume do's and don'ts because if you follow these guidelines, your resume will stay on the top of the pile and be in the running for whatever you're applying for. And if you don't follow these do's and don'ts, or I guess if you include the don'ts, your resume is gonna go to the bottom of the pile or straight to the recycling bin. You don't want that to happen. So of course you're going to be honest. Your resume is going to be typed and easy to read. They're never done by hand. And important information should really stand out and be easy to find. It shouldn't look like an essay. And you need to make it perfect. You need to have someone proofread it for spelling or grammatical errors. You need to have consistent punctuation, all of those things. You need to use action words or verbs. You need to use words, for example, like coached, designed, built, organized to describe your skills and experiences. And you need to include your contact information, your name, your email, your address, your phone number. Your email must be one that's somewhat professional sounding. So, you know, it can't be uh, underdog at gmail.com or slippery snake at hotmail.com. It's got to be more professional sounding. Maybe your first initial, last name, something simple clear, memorable, and professional. You do not use paragraphs on a resume. You use bullets to highlight information. And you don't handwrite your corrections on a final copy. They have to be fixed before it's printed or emailed. Okay, so don't include personal information such as the ones listed here, like gender, religion, nationality, date of birth, height, and weight. Companies are not allowed to discriminate against you based on your age or your size or your beliefs or the color of your skin. So those don't need to be on a resume. Don't forget if you're including an objective on your resume to customize it or to change it. If you're reusing your resume, for example, if your objective is to obtain a part-time job at Canadian Tire on one resume, and then your next job you're applying for Anita's Organic Food Mill or something, you need to make sure that you're updating that piece of it. Don't use personal pronouns or articles like I and me. A resume has to be written in a telegraphic way, so you don't need to use pronouns at all and you limit articles. For example, instead of saying, I developed a new product that added $2 million in sales, you don't say that, you use a bullet and you would say, developed a new product. All right, so you don't need to use pronouns at all. Don't fake any dates or job titles or work responsibilities because if your references are checked and someone finds out you lied, you're not getting the job, okay? Uh, keep a simple, normal font. And keep the font size between 10 and 14, ideally 12. It's easier to read if your resume is faxed, scanned, photocopied. So here's a resume with some problems on it. I would like you to pause and take a look at it, see if you can find the problems in this resume. Okay, so hopefully you found some of the errors in this resume. There is one rather funny one here in this second bullet here. You're responsible for severing guests to create memorable moments and long lasting loyalty. I believe they meant to say serving, not severing. Uh, so that's a big example of something that was missed in editing. It's spelled right if the word was severing, but you don't want to be severing your guests. Big spelling mistake right here. Server is S-E-R. So that's going to send it to the bottom of the pile. Buffet is spelled wrong. So this person's resume is likely going to be tossed. Bad spelling and grammar are one of the fastest ways to be taken out of consideration for the job. Even if the job doesn't involve any writing at the job, it can still just make it so it doesn't go to the pile because it looks like you don't care enough about the job to put in the effort to make a proper resume. Here's another one with some problems in it. So take a look and see if you can figure out what's wrong with this one. Okay, so you want to avoid handwritten style fonts on your resume. 
and it's a hard to read font and it's guaranteed to turn the hiring manager off the idea of looking at your resume further. Um, sometimes resumes will go through uh, software that processes it and looks for keywords and certain things like that to just kind of rank the resumes before a human has even looked at them. And these fancy fonts make it harder for those machines to read it as well. The best fonts for your resume are easy to read and standard fonts on a computer. So to make a better first impression, you want to stick to basic classic fonts. If you take a look at this resume, it's got pretty good spelling and it's well organized. Everything stands out. The way the objective and the qualifications are uh, separating the categories is really nicely done. He's got good use of bullets. You'll see that he starts with action verbs, founded, helped, dedicated, spent. So there are a lot of really good things about this resume, but there is a problem with it. Take a minute, we'll pause the video to read the content and see if you can find an issue. So while it's okay to include hobbies on your resume, if they're relevant to the job, and you lack professional experience, this bad resume takes it a step too far. So unless you're applying for a job in esports, information on your gaming achievements is irrelevant to your professional qualifications and should be left off of the resume. So dedicated hundreds of hours of training in League of Legends is not really something that shows a quality that someone was looking for in a worker. Okay, so you've got to find something that's more appropriate from volunteer work, participation in teams, clubs, uh, all kinds of other ways to show those qualities. All right, so this one here has a big problem based on our do's and don'ts. I wonder if you can figure this one out. You can pause the video and uh, let me know what you think. All right, so I wonder what you came up with. The problem with this one is the flashy graphics and the picture. First of all, unless you're going for a sales position or an acting job or a modeling job, your picture shouldn't be on the resume because that's something that your employer shouldn't judge you based on. All right, the other problem with this resume, even though it looks really cool, is all the fancy graphics. So if they're going through a computer program for judging them, they're not gonna be read and it will be tossed to the bottom of the ranking and uh, things like stats with percentages and things like that, they don't belong on a resume. They could be in a bulleted list of skills. So even though it might look good initially, all those flashy graphics have to go. So when you use the resume builder in my blueprint, you're going to end up with a really clean, organized resume that looks something like this one here. And we're going to take a look at how to use that, how to create it, and then what you can do with it. Okay, so that takes us to the resume builder. Our focus today will be on the work tab, primarily the resumes feature. Let's jump into it. Today, you're going to write one resume and you are going to write this resume with the intention to duplicate it whenever you apply for a job. You might be wondering, why can't I just have one resume? And that is a very good question. To answer this, I want you to picture an employer. Some receive hundreds of applications. What makes a resume stand out is a resume that shows that research has been done about their company and that the applicant is willing to spend time customizing the resume to that particular job. So how do you duplicate the resume? Once you have one created, click on these three dots. It creates an exact copy that can be edited. Two more things that I want to point out to help you in this process is the resume guide to the right of my screen and the exemplar resumes below it. If you click on the guide, you will receive detailed instructions on writing a resume, and I highly encourage you to take a look. Under the resume guide are some exemplar resumes. I know you can find exemplar resumes elsewhere online, but it gets noisy with conflicting advice. Checking these out will match the formatting and content that we present to you with my blueprint. I'm going to let you get started with adding your contact information and education, as doing so is self-explanatory. Skip the objective, we will take a look at that together. To edit each section, just click on the pencil edit symbol. Excellent, now you're going to add an objective to your resume. As said earlier, you will be duplicating this resume, 
so we are going to make the objective statement quite general. To add an objective, click on the blue Add Objective box. But before writing, check out the Need Help tab. It encourages you to be concise and to the point. Just a sentence that briefly describes you and states what you are looking for. For example, if I'm searching for a part-time job and hoping to work with children, but I don't have an exact position to apply to just yet, I might write that I'm a hardworking student seeking a part-time position working with children. Later on, when I apply to a specific job, let's say as a camp counselor, I might say, I'm a hardworking student seeking a part-time position as a camp counselor. I wish to apply my creative thinking and energy into this dynamic opportunity. As you can see, I can build upon this as I find a specific position to apply to. I can't stress enough that it's okay not to have a lot, if any, work experience at this stage of your life. However, if you have held a job before, to add the work experience that you have, click on Add Work Experience. When you do this, make sure that you read the Need Help tab. Employers do pay attention to writing style and grammar, so write in the correct tense. It also reminds you to highlight the skills that you develop, which is super important. Adding extracurriculars demonstrates that you're willing to get involved and that you have developed life skills in various contexts. Committees, clubs, sports, these all count. Extracurriculars can be activities that are done in school or even outside of school. I wouldn't go too far back. Try to keep your extracurriculars to what you are currently doing or have been involved in for the past year. If you have volunteer experience, definitely include it. Volunteering displays so many personal characteristics that employers are looking for, but make sure that you describe what skills you develop, just like you already did in the work experience section. Before doing the skills section, I want you to write down your skills. Are you creative? Do you show leadership? If you're stuck, access these samples that my blueprint provides, but I highly encourage you to think about your personal qualities before accessing this. Once you've brainstormed your skills, add them to your resume. Try to limit yourself to three skills. Achievements. This is a great section if you are looking for your first job. Consider any awards you have received or special recognition that you have earned in the past couple of years. You don't have to add anything to this section, but if there is an accomplishment that you want an employer to know about, this is where you put it. Certifications. Along the same line as achievements, if you have any certifications, this is where you list them. Lifeguarding, CPR, SmartServe, WIMIS, these are examples of certifications. Hobbies and interests. It's okay for this section to be unrelated to the job. Employers want to know who they're hiring. This section is just a list and it doesn't need any description. Again, try to limit this to three hobbies and interests. A reference should be someone that knows you quite well. If you've had a job before, it's a good idea to include a reference for your previous employer. A reference should not be a family member though. I know, I know. Your family knows you very well, but they might be quite biased and a potential employer wants a fair assessment of your abilities. It is always good practice to talk to your references before adding them to your resume. It's more of a courtesy thing more than anything. It's also good practice to contact your references again if you've interviewed with an employer. Also a nice courtesy. They'll appreciate the heads up and as a bonus, they might brainstorm ahead of time your best qualities to be prepared for an employer's call. You can opt to include your references on a separate sheet of paper. This is common practice. Congrats, you've created a resume. Now I wouldn't go as far as saying that you're done as there are a few steps you can take to fine tune it. Let's start by previewing your resume. Click on Preview Resume. And this will give you an overall view of what you have just created. Looks pretty good, eh? However, you might be interested in changing the design. To do so, click on Change Design, and to the right, four designs will appear. Your resume's default is the basic design. What I like about the basic design is that you can download it in three different formats. A Word document, 
which you can then edit through Word if you desire, a PDF, which is nice if you are emailing your resume as it can't be edited by anyone else, or as a text file. A text file gets rid of the formatting, but I like this option if I am copying and pasting my resume into an online application, as this guarantees that the content of my resume won't be scrambled. In saying this, check out the classic, clean, and traditional formats if you're not wanting to convert your resume into Word. This brings me to an important point though. If you are not exporting your resume into Word, you will want to use an online spell checker to spell check your work. An employer might be quick to dismiss your resume if they see spelling and grammar errors. So, after all of this hard work, you don't want your resume dismissed for something that's quite preventable. I'm also going to stress the importance of having someone else proofread your resume. Having a fresh set of eyes is super important and there is a good chance that your proofreader will have a great suggestion or two. Once you've added your references, you're sure of the accuracy of your resume, you've done a spelling and grammar check, and you've had a proofreader, then your resume is ready to be exported into any of the available designs. So there's some criteria that we can use to evaluate your resume and you can see it on the board here. So we're gonna be marking it for organization and form, basically the formatting, which my blueprint will do a lot of for you. Uh, the elements of business writing, so it, it'll be a single page or two. Things will be written in brief, understandable phrases, and it will have um, action verbs, a range of skills and experiences and so forth. As well, grammar, usage, mechanics, and spelling. These are all vital in a resume. All right, here's your checklist for the week. Please make sure you've completed the following activities. You're going to review your resume contact. You're going to make sure that you've met those do's and don'ts, used active verbs, and that everything is up to date since you worked on your resume in my blueprint last year. You're going to find two references, and if they are more than a year old, you should try to update your references, keep them as current as possible, and be sure to ask them for their contact information. And then if you have leftover time, you can do any catch-up work that you have left to do. Some people might need to start their resumes from scratch because they may not have one in here. All right, that's it for me this week. We'll see you next week. Have a great week.